Hmm, where did I put that bag? Hi ladies, oh my gosh, just a couple days before the new year. How excited are you? Okay y'all, this is part two of my two-part series on the top best style tips for women. In part one, we really talked about key ways to define your own personal style. If you missed that, no worries. I will put the link for you below in the description box. Y'all, I do what I do because I really love sharing. I always have. These last 13 style tips that I'm gonna share with you today are ones that I feel are very easy to implement and more importantly, give you the biggest bang for your buck because that's what it's all about, right? Doing more with what we have. Okay, I know a lot of you gave me grief on my mispronunciation of Givenchy. Duly noted, I will be more cognizant of correctly pronouncing designer names. Got it. Ladies, this isn't just a channel, we are a community. Come as you are, stay as long as you like. That's what we're all about here. This is a respite for women to share, connect, and just have fun in a no judgy eyes environment. Comment and share in peace and serenity. Join me in my living room every Tuesday and Friday where we dish on all things style, wellness, and beauty. I would love to have you as part of our community. Know the three color rule. The underlying premise of the three color rule is not to combine any more than three colors in your outfit, excluding white and black. Why white and black? Because technically white and black aren't colors, they are tones. Basically black and white are freebies. If you check out any of your favorite style icons, I will garner that 99.999% of the time, they're not wearing more than three colors. I love this rule for its simplicity. Black and white are freebies, add no more more than three colors. Invest in basics. I know you've heard this a million times, but I wanna share three quick things to keep in mind about basics. Number one, I heard this quote one time that went something like this, we can't afford to buy cheap stuff. While you'll spend a little more upfront for better quality, you'll be replacing your basics with much less frequency than if you had bought cheaper versions. Secondly, keep it clean. All of your basics should be as neutral as possible. That means no bells, whistles, ruffles, frills, adornments. That's going to give you the most versatility and the most life out of your piece. It's also going to be a lot more classic than trendy. Choose basics that fit your style. Just because a stylist says here are 15 basics does not mean that you have to buy every single one of them. Case in point, most stylists will say, oh, you need a de denim jacket in your closet. I have never worn a denim jacket. I hate them. The point is, remember that when you're looking at basics, choose what you know you will wear. If you know you don't like a denim jacket, don't buy it. Swap out your hardware. This is a little known secret and a lot of women don't do it either because they haven't thought of it or it's a little extra work and so they don't do it. If you have an inexpensive jacket or blazer that has kind of chintzy looking buttons, buttons, swap them out for buttons that are more unique and kind of cool looking. It's going to give your jacket, coat, etc., a much higher end designer look. All you have to do is go to your local fabric store, choose some cool buttons, and then honestly, unless you sew, take it to your tailor and have her swap out the hardware for your new purchases. Remove the pockets from your white pants. I have no idea why brands and designers put pockets in white pants because they always show through and it looks really tacky. Take them out. Your tailor will do it. It's very easy. It gives you a much cleaner, streamlined look, and you don't have those weird pockets sticking through your white pants. Take them out. Okay, y'all, it is time for shout outs. I get to tell you how much I truly appreciate you. I'd like to give a shout out to Miss Jill Mansfield. Jill loves her Max Mara coats and Miss Zoya Fleischer. Ladies, thank you so much for being a part of the community. I truly appreciate having you here. And if you would like to be a part, comment below, subscribe to my channel. I have brand new videos every Tuesday and Friday on all things style, wellness, and beauty. I would love to have you as a part of our community. Own basic silk camis. To me, this is a no-brainer. Black, white, I also like navy. It's an easy, easy piece to wear under a blazer, cardigan, jacket, and it gives it a little more of an upscale look than just a traditional cotton. I am wearing a silk cami. This one's by Alice and Olivia, and I will always put links for anything that I am wearing, my lipstick, all the good stuff down in the description box, and I also put links to a lot of the different products that we're talking about. All right, so I also love, stand by. I have silk camis in a bodysuit. I think that it's much cleaner. It stays tucked in nicely and it just gives a streamlined look. This is the same thing that I'm wearing in different colors. It's Alice and Olivia. I like the little drop cowl neck. I think these are gorgeous. I also have it in black. If you like something that's a little more feminine, go for something with a lacy detail, a lacy edge if you like that kind. Own at least one classic white blouse. Crisp white 
why it always looks fresh and higher end, always. And it's so super versatile. Wear it with jeans, slacks, a pencil skirt, wide leg trousers. Remember at the Oscars one year when Sharon Stone spilled something on her top and so she threw on a Gap white shirt with this beautiful silk skirt and looked amazing? That's what I'm talking about. Belt it. One of the fastest and easiest ways to add shape and a cool designer detail is a belt belt. We're talking about something that runs a little higher on your waist and cinches it in. It gives you an immediate hourglass look. Wear it with blazers, jackets, cardigans, polished, high-end, cool. Drop mic tuck it in. Some women, for some reason, like leaving their shirt untucked because they think that it covers up areas that they want to hide or it's just a little more comfortable. What happens when you do that is you actually look frumpy, bigger than what you are, and just unkempt. Tucking your shirt in gives you a more streamlined look. You look longer, leaner, and you look taller. That means a full tuck or a half tuck. It also creates definition around the midsection, which is always more flattering. Same color boot and pant equals a longer leg. You want to create a long visual line. The trifecta for looking as long and lean as possible, high waist pant, wide leg with the same color boot. Long, lean, gorgeous. Okay, I brought these out for my next one. Flats are cool. Nothing will give you that cool girl look faster than a pair of cool flats. It says, I'm relaxed, I'm confident, and I don't need to prove it. There are a ton of chic options. You've got um, ballet flats, loafers, driving moccasins, mules. Choose what you're most drawn to and then buy quality. At five foot two, I personally don't like a flat flat, like nothing to it. I like something with a little bit of a flat form, like these mules that I just bought from Todd's. Very comfortable, but they've got rubber kind of waffle sole that makes it a little more comfortable. It gives me just a little bit of height while still being a flat. I also like these by Port and Prairie. Just a touch of a heel, but flats are cool. Okay, I know, I, brought, I pretty much brought my whole closet down. Own a statement heel and flat. Color, print, and style can really, really pack a punch and take any boring outfit to a head turning, oh wow, she looks great, status, and that's what we're looking for. Having a statement heel and flat just obviously gives you a lot more versatility. These are just a few of my favorites. I'll show you. A red shoe, you can never go wrong. Put this with anything. Think of your LBD. This is um, a Louboutin. These animal print Louboutins. I took this outfit that could be very, very, very boring. It's just a teal sweater and a black pair of pants. When I put it with black heels and a black bag, it looks fine, but watch when I swap it out for the animal print shoes. Hmm, where did I put that bag? Here it is. Look at the difference. It went from boring to that is a really cool outfit. If you like pink, which I do, uh, these are Stuart Weitzman. Jeans, slacks, skirts, anything. Nice pop of color there. Accessorize, whether it's a statement necklace, a pop of a color bag, unique sunglasses, or a pair of great earrings. Accessories are a really easy way to change your look from meh to ooh, she looks great. Try complementary colors. If you're familiar with color theory, you know that complementary colors are opposite colors on the color wheel. This theory says that the opposite color of any color on the color wheel is its complementary color. That means it is going to go together well and it is virtually effortless. Notice the orange and the cobalt blue. These are opposite colors and look how beautiful it looks. Okay, y'all, that was part two of our two-part series on style tips. Happy New Year and until a couple days from now, see you soon. Bye.